Now... Caro. You really surpassed my expectations, and I want to say thank you. The YouTube video I made was to give you two choices. Either take the high road, or fall into the trap I set. I honestly wanted you to take the high road and grow a little bit more as an adult. But you going out of your way to abuse the copyright system is just fantastic too. You proved my point in my video, so thank you. Get fucked. Hi guys. Hey Kiro. How's it going? Been a long two and a half years, huh buddy? You know, back in 2019 when I got word the police were complaining that you'd clearly scrubbed all your devices, this was the outcome I was starting to expect. The old disappointed but not surprised routine, you know? What was surprising was this comeback video of yours. I mean, what the fuck is this? You've had two and a half years to put together some kind of defense for yourself. And this was the best you could do? No attempts to seriously confront the evidence? No alibis that would make certain accusations impossible? If for God's sakes, you didn't even mention your late dog Coda or your late boyfriend, you know, uh, Colwyn Kali, who, according to your logic and narrative, were metaphorically dug up and their corpses used by ghoulish trolls looking to destroy your life. That's horrible, but uh, no, you just said I didn't make the deer video and the police couldn't arrest me, so I didn't do it, which is the weakest defense you could come up with. Then again, what else could I expect from someone like you? <sighs> Enough yammering, let's get straight to picking this thing apart. Cue the content warning. Five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Kiro would have you believe that the Pennsylvania police, the New York police, and the FBI declared him innocent. This, of course, is not how reality works. The police do not determine if someone is innocent or guilty of a crime. The police determine if there is enough evidence a suspect committed a crime for a prosecuting attorney to press charges. Not having enough evidence to press charges does not mean the suspect did not commit a crime. But what happened in January completely surprised me. The police were able to retain a search warrant, which blew my mind. There's honestly nothing there to justify a search warrant. Per the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution, the police must present enough evidence to prove probable cause to a judge or magistrate in order to obtain a search and seizure warrant. The U.S. Supreme Court has determined probable cause to mean a reasonable person would believe that a crime was being committed, had been committed, or was going to be committed. If the police managed to get a search and seizure warrant for your items, it's because they had enough evidence to reasonably determine something was going on. As the saying goes, where there's smoke, there's usually fire. But then I saw the actual piece of paper. Someone called the police, accused me of having illicit material on my computer, and the warrant was to check for distribution and storage of it. A single phone call is not enough to meet probable cause. The police got that warrant for your electronics for reasons beyond some random person telling them you had illegal content on your computer without substantiating evidence. You know this. And the warrant was to check for distribution and storage of it. Which is a felony. Possession of bestiality material in and of itself is not illegal in the state of Pennsylvania where you live. Distribution of said material is a misdemeanor, not a felony. It would only be a felony if you were distributing animal crush content, which I do not believe anything from your side of the logs would qualify as. Are you trying to drum up the charges you are potentially facing because you think it looks more impressive that you were, quote, proven innocent, unquote, of committing a felony? Or are you saying the police had reason to believe you had felony level material on your computer? If this would have been true, I would not be here talking to you today. I would be in jail. The lack of an arrest does not mean a suspect is innocent. Java Chicken, better known by her fursuit maker name Wildlife, has been caught twice sexually abusing her dogs. She took pictures of herself doing it, with some pictures showing her entire face. There was no denying it was her in those pictures. and She didn't even attempt to deny it either time. She's confessed to both the public at large and the police. Yet despite all this, 
She has never spent a moment in jail. To this day, she hasn't even been charged with anything. And it isn't a matter of her not breaking the law, because where she lives, bestiality is illegal. A police investigation ending without an indictment does not mean that a crime didn't happen. And being not guilty isn't the same as being innocent. They took everything, my cameras, my phone, my computer, all my hard drives. So after they took my stuff, I felt utterly hopeless. Without my video equipment, how could I fight back? They took the only thing I could use to help prove my innocence. Hey guys. Hey guys. Oh my. Hey. Hey. God, hey. Hey. You know, it's been a minute. I'd also like to point out that in November 2018, you said you weren't going to be making any statements about this case until the investigation was over. So the police taking your equipment didn't stop you from fighting back because, by your own words, you weren't going to fight back until everything was done. Honestly, tried to leave the community in January because no one was listening to me. That's not what you were saying in private. By putting off answers, you are making the situation worse for yourself. I am sure you are under lots of fire and stress already. But please, do the right thing. I will. I only left because the police took all of my electronics. So I can't make any videos until I get my stuff back. Police took nearly two years to look at my possessions. They even sent my devices to the FBI forensics lab. And also the New York police got involved. And through all that, there were never any charges against me. If there's any evidence being used against me, the police would have found it. Sure, unless you scrubbed and encrypted your devices, which is exactly what the lead investigator for your case complained about. It sure would be a shame if you had displayed a consistent behavioral pattern of deleting evidence that would corroborate with this claim. You know, like that time you deleted your telegram less than five hours after the logs were posted. Or that time you deleted your Periscope garage tour video after people used it to connect the dots with animal abuse videos featuring a dog identical to yours in a garage identical to yours. Or how about that time you removed your classic ARF ARF greeting from your YouTube About section after people pointed out the chat logs featured the same greeting. Or how about that time you deleted all your tweets and privated the video about your boyfriend, Colwyn Colley, after people pointed out he was actually the zoo sadist, Ill One Sheppy Paws? Or that time you deleted all pictures of your dog from Fur Affinity after I pointed out some of those same pictures were uploaded to Beast Forum before you even made your Fur Affinity? Or the time you removed all mention of Cheesecake from your Fur Affinity after I pointed out that a Zoo Files kick username was identical to your saying about Cheesecake? Boy, I wonder why the police would have a hard time finding evidence on someone like you. A lot of people say that I got away with it because of legal loopholes, such as denying a search or statute of limitations. However, these people do not know the law. If there was some legal loophole, my case would have been closed a long time ago. Hell, it would have been closed in a week. Oh, you mean like that bullshit five-day-long police investigation your friend Ashley Zoe Fox completely faked, hoping it would make people stop calling the police on you? This is not how the police work. What would actually cause an investigation to conclude that quickly is if the police could immediately tell the evidence being submitted was false. They do not conclude that quickly when the evidence is substantial. The real world does not work like Law & Order or CSI where forensics equipment is always immediately available and crimes are solved in a couple days. Police have limited resources and only so many hours in the day. It takes time to investigate. And the fact the police determined there was enough evidence against you to put two years worth of time into investigating you is not the sign of innocence you want people to believe. Because I know for some people, the results of two police departments and the FBI proving me innocent just isn't enough. Don't make me tap the sign. Snake Thing was the ringleader of the group of zoo sadists outed in September 2018. He is a zoosadist, a pedophile, a necrophile. Basically, if an inherently abusive paraphilia exists, this guy has it. His arrest and incarceration has helped most people realize that the chat logs he had with various other animal abusers and pedophiles are real. A sentiment that has been further backed up by multiple other group members confessing to their chat logs being real. Kiro, however, would have you believe all of this is somehow proof that everything against him and him alone was falsified. Well, it is true I have talked to Snake Thing before. I didn't know he was a monster he turned out to be. We were not friends. Just some guy I met in some furry group. What furry group? 
Since 2018, you've been talking about the supposed barrel art telegram chat group you met Snake Thing in. A long time ago, I was part of this group. It was for people who had had an interest in feral artwork, you know. And this place had safer work and not safer work. And I met this guy in there called Nalazar. But not once have you ever given the name of that chat group, nor has anyone else in the supposed chat group come forward to back your statement. So, where did you meet Snake Thing? Yes, people were arrested during this, like Snake Thing. But he wasn't arrested because of the logs. Yes, he was. Snake Thing was first arrested in October 2018 because of pictures and videos that proved he had sexually assaulted a puppy. These pictures and videos were found in the logs. During this arrest, the Coos County Police also confiscated all of his electronics to search for additional evidence. Without the logs, Snake Thing would not be in prison right now. People did report him to the police, and they did investigate him. But his charges do not reflect what was in the logs. Yes, they do. Snake Thing was originally indicted on animal sex abuse charges, which reflect his abuse of the puppy, which was uncovered through the logs. Why the charges of animal abuse were not brought back in the second indictment, I don't know, but it is an undeniable fact Snake Thing is guilty of those crimes. His final charges were for child sex abuse material possession and distribution, as well as bestiality material distribution. And if you look at the chat logs, he was, objectively, distributing bestiality and child sex abuse material. This shows he was in possession of illegal pornography. Not because he was a ringleader, not because of these logs people keep talking about, but because he had illegal content. Where do you think he was getting the illegal content from, Kiro? How do you think the police were able to prove probable cause that he had illegal content so they could get a warrant, Kiro? So we were both investigated by the police, and he was found guilty. Meanwhile, I never had a charge on me. That should say something. So many people were distracted by targeting me, while Snake Thing nearly got away with it. He was the real monster. Carol, you literally took this defense from a zoophile podcast. So now you have to ask yourself, what did this absolute character assassination accomplish in the end? Well, as far as I can tell, what it accomplished is it made for a really good shield for real abusers who were able to perhaps make their getaway. Snake Thing didn't almost get away with it. He was the first to be arrested only 40 days after the logs were released. He was the first person to have his electronics confiscated, and so far, he's been the only one convicted and thrown in prison. Of all the people outed in the leaks, he has gotten away with the least. I wish I could say the same about you. For a good part of this video, Kiro attempts to refute the evidence against him by attacking the credibility of its origin. This is what's known as a genetic fallacy, a logical fallacy in which a claim's origins are used to prove or disprove its legitimacy, rather than discussing the merit of the claim itself. While a claim's origin may provide supporting context to its merit, origin does not, in and of itself, define the merit. This is all to say, Kiro can't attack the evidence itself, so he's kicking up whatever dust he can to hide. Secondly, I want to point out the legitimacy of the person who posted the logs. This user claims to be an actual confessed zoophile, and the logs contain images of bestiality. How does that make him a legitimate source if he himself is one of those people that abuses animals? People involved in criminal networks are often the ones best equipped to understand who is committing crimes and how they're doing it. Why do you think Kevin Mitnick, the first person to be on the FBI's most wanted list for crimes related to computer hacking, is now a computer security consultant for the FBI? Yes, Zudonym is a zoophile. This has never been denied or hidden, and they deserve to be punished to the fullest extent of the law for any animal abuse they have participated in. Furthermore, yes, they should have submitted this evidence to the police first before speaking about anything publicly. But being an animal abuser themselves does not mean they can't provide accurate information on other animal abusers, and going to Twitter instead of the police does not automatically disqualify their evidence. Attacking their credibility instead of attacking the actual evidence indicates you can't disprove what they have said about you. A lot of people also sourced an internet harassment site. That damn Kiwi Farms. People are claiming it was a trustworthy site with reliable information. Kiwi Farms is a gossip forum dedicated to chronicling the lives of weird people on the internet. 
They do this by collecting screenshots and archiving information put out there by the very people they talk about. I'm not here to defend everything Kiwi Farms users do or say you should believe everything you read there. Putting aside the bigotry and doxing that's allowed to be posted there, it is a public forum that anyone can join, and as such, you're not going to have an expert behind every post. In some threads, you're lucky if you can find someone who isn't a complete idiot. It's a place where anyone can say just about anything, for better or for worse. And it's why you need to rely on the screenshots and archives for information, not the commentary from the peanut gallery. Use your brain and ask basic questions to determine for yourself if you believe their evidence or not. A lot of people use this place as their dubious source of information. Even their own staff members of that very website say it's just a place to laugh at people. It's not a resource for reliable information. The user you're presenting in this screenshot is not saying Kiwi Farms isn't a source for information. He's saying the site isn't dedicated to vigilante justice and moral grandstanding in response to someone who thinks the farms are for getting people thrown in prison. It's full of homophobic. How does this disprove the evidence against you? Transphobic. How does this disprove the evidence against you? And erases people. How does this disprove the evidence against you? So now we finally get to some arguments with actual meat to them. Granted, Kiro's arguments are more like shoe leather than actual meat, but I'll give him credit for at least trying to make something resembling an attempt. A lot of people pointed to me when it came to one of the videos. Now, for the animal abuse videos, I'm going to switch up the order in which he addresses them, because I feel it will better show the point I'm trying to make. Same with that terrible deer video. People said it was confirmed to be me, but you can clearly see the guy's face in it. He has a visible tattoo on him, too. I even posted pictures of my body on Twitter to disprove this. This is all true. Kiro was not in the deer video. He appears to have been sharing it on his alt account Yami the Wolf, but he had nothing to do with its actual production. The man in the video is a necrophilic zoophile who uses the pseudonym Gatorvent. He was identified through other animal abuse videos where the same chest tattoo can be seen. Now, keep it in your mind how Kira went into specific details about the deer video to prove his innocence. And let's compare it to how he handles the dog video. One in particular had a person's lips and their nose in it, and claimed it to be me with absolutely certainty. I don't understand how you can make that connection from a blurry photo. Same with that terrible deer video. Notice how he's suddenly skimping on the details? There's far more to the dog video than just a blurry face. Like the fact the dog was a match to Kiro's dog and the room was a match to Kiro's parents' garage, and the clothes the person behind the camera was wearing were a match to Kiro's clothes, and the video's origin was traced back to a beast form account run by someone who talked just like Kiro and was uploading pictures of Koda nearly a year before Kiro posted those same photos on Fur Affinity. Kiro? Why were you so eager to go into detail with the deer video, which you are objectively innocent of being involved in, Yet when it comes to this dog video, you're skipping over the details entirely and lying about why people think it's you. Videos can be staged, Photoshop exists, so screenshots can be easily edited. We aren't talking about screenshots. We're talking about chat logs, forwarded messages, archived web pages, and videos. Things that can't be tampered with in Photoshop. But while we're on the topic of fake screenshots, let's take a minute and talk about yours like the fake screenshots you used to try to claim you were hacked. Another question a lot of people have asked, and this is a big one that's been going across, is did you actually get hacked? Yes. Though, I lied about one thing. I was kicked out of my account. At first, when it happened, all I saw was my name changed, and before I could take any screenshots of the active sessions, I was booted out of my account. I felt like I needed to prove myself to people because I was getting questions about all this stuff at once. And I was thinking irrationally and I was just freaking out in general. So I thought, well, what if I just found one on the internet? Oh, okay. It was totally understandable for you to use fake screenshots because everyone was piling on you. This, this poor, innocent person and you made an honest mistake in a moment of desperation to make the attack stop. But, wait a minute, you posted that screenshot on the 16th, and people didn't start piling on you until the 18th, 
when Mordecai's tweets about you went viral. Why have you dropped this hacking story that you were so gung-ho about at the beginning of this controversy? Was it because Cothrix made you realize Iranian super hackers couldn't edit the forwarded messages from your account to make it look like you said things like a dog permanently ruined your butthole or how you're into more than quote, normal zoo stuff, unquote, because Telegram disables editing on messages after 72 hours and those particular messages were months old and you had no way of explaining those messages other than admitting you did in fact say those things and were trying to lie your way out of owning up to it? HTML is more easily so. Here's a video about that. So now we've got a video from his friend Kit the Soulless on how the logs could have been faked. Rather than go off on the sheer amount of effort it would take to fake something of this magnitude, I'd just like to point out, Kit here claims to have hard proof the Kiro logs were tampered with. So, the logs are a pain in the ass. I have looked through them, there are inconsistencies in the code, the ones that were cherry-picked by Zudonym to prove that all the logs were real were just that. They were cherry-picked. Yes, those particular messages did belong to Kiro's account. However, not all of the messages in those logs did. In fact, a majority of the logs that were against Kiro had different ID tags in the coding. So, they were edited. So if I may be so bold as to ask, why aren't you showing us that? Kit claims to have had this exonerating evidence for years, yet he couldn't be bothered to dig up the proof for Kiro's comeback? And why is it when asked to see this evidence, Kit claimed he was too busy to dig it up despite having time to tell people how he totally has it? Why has he been bragging about having it for nearly 17 months without showing anything and instead defaulting to this video discussing a maybe scenario? Showing how something could be faked is a far cry from proving something is fake. Is it because this supposed proof doesn't actually exonerate you as much as you want people to believe it does? Or is it yet another bullshit lie, like the many other half-baked lies you've had your friends come up with to defend you? How can the source be trusted? Before I get into this segment, I need to preface it by saying Cothrix had nothing to do with this. He didn't help me write this, he didn't provide me with anything, the videos are from archival sites, and the logs are from Kiro's own friends leaking them. Cothrix does not want to talk about Kiro, and after the way Kiro has treated him, I can't fault him. So please, don't ask Cothrix about this, don't bother him. But I can't, in good conscience, stay quiet when I know someone is being defamed. I also can't just sit by when I can prove what a massive psychopathic liar Kiro is by using the very evidence he vouched for in this video. After the Zeusadist evidence exploded into the public consciousness on Twitter, the YouTuber Cothrix reached out to Kiro to talk about what was going on and develop a video about the topic. Kiro agreed, and over the next six days, he, Cothrix, and Zosh, yeah, yeah, that, that Zosh, discussed the logs and Kiro's involvement with them. This culminated in Cothrix releasing a video titled, The Truth About Kiro. After releasing the video, he exported the chat logs of him, Kiro, and Zosh, and gave them to two people so they could fact-check his video and so they could see what Kiro had been saying in private. One of these people was Ashley Zoe Fox, a close friend of Kiro's who has staunchly defended his innocence throughout the entire controversy. She had Steph Heinkel, another supporter of Kiro, leak the logs onto Twitter. Cothrix responded by going over the logs in a video, confirming what Ashley and Sniff had leaked was true. Kiro himself has verified these logs are real because he included a screenshot from them in his video. I'm going over all this so you understand how I got the information I'm about to show you and to prove that it's all legitimate according to all parties involved. Now I'm going to let this clip play out in full before digging into it, so you can see that I'm not cutting context or putting words in his mouth. There was a thing going around about me about the Cothrix interview. I don't even want to call it an interview because that's not really what it was. But, you know, we'll go with that for now. When the controversy first started, he messaged me on Twitter. He said he could help. So we took to Telegram to talk. Right away, he didn't listen to me because he thought he knew everything based on the accusing tweets and kept badgering me on changing my story. I threatened to leave the group chat with him and another person in it because they were not listening to my side of the story. 
and jumping to conclusions. As soon as I said that, they proceeded to blackmail me and said they would make a worse video if I didn't stay. At this point in the controversy, I just wanted a friend to help me because I didn't know how to handle this type of situation. So I thought in the end, he would do the right thing. So I agreed to stay in the group. He gave me the revised script, but I didn't really look at it. I put my trust in him. I agreed to retweet the video when it came out, and I did. But then I saw the video. He claimed that I said the logs were 100% real. Nowhere in that conversation did I say that. Because it's not true. He made this hit piece on me. I felt so betrayed by this. I unretweeted the video and left the group. I felt so used by Cothrix. Did you get all that? Good. Now, let's look at what actually happened. When the controversy first started, he messaged me on Twitter. He said he could help, so we took to Telegram to talk. Right away, he didn't listen to me, because he thought he knew everything based on the accusing tweets. Cothrix didn't believe everything based solely on tweets. He had done his own research and come to his own conclusions based on his findings. There are a few big problems with Hero's story about the logs not being him. One is that in the logs, there are pictures of his dog that are not posted anywhere else online. It's possible that a person pretending to be him could have gotten pictures of a dog that looked like his, but because his dog was an Australian Shepherd, German Shepherd mix, and that particular breed has a myriad of different color patterns it can have, the chances of an imposter having a near identical match to his dog are slim. Along with that, there is a ton of personal information in these logs that, while technically obtainable, would require the absolute most obsessive of stalkers to get. There's also the numerous people who got a hold of some of the forwarded messages from the logs and could run an ID check on them, and match it to Kiro's now deleted Telegram account. I didn't believe these at first because, to be honest, a lot of them are just badly done. You can't just show me a screenshot where you took two completely innocuous messages and match the IDs and say, see, that proves it. You actually have to show him saying something incriminating that was in the logs. But the one that won me over was Nas Hyena's video about it. Nas Hyena has no reason to lie and faking the video seems difficult and pointless. But the thing that really gave me that feeling in the pit of my stomach where I knew that these logs were real was actually one of the only things that wouldn't even be that hard to fake. And that is the way that Kiro greets people. I'd only ever spoken to him once before, very briefly, and the first thing he said to me is, Arf Arf had a quick question. So I looked through the logs, and sure enough, you can see that same greeting a few times. And I'm not saying that this is definitive proof of anything. Like I said, this is the easiest thing in the world to fake for anyone who has spoken to Kiro, but I guess it was the moment that everything just kind of clicked. And kept badgering me on changing my story. Cothrix wasn't badgering you to change your story. You kept changing your story. So you are saying the person there is definitely not you. Is any of it real? Do you know this guy Snake Thing at all? I don't know who Snake Thing is. I have never heard of him before all of this. None of this is real. I want to believe you, but I'm having a little bit of a hard time. I have a video here from an acquaintance of yours that shows that the account in those logs matches the one that you spoke to her privately. I don't know Snake Thing, but I might have talked to her. Okay, I maybe talked to her, yes. At this point, I believe the truth is somewhere in the middle. I don't think that the entirety of the logs with Snake Thing are faked. I have evidence from numerous people showing that at least some of those messages are real. If you are lying about any of this, I and many others can easily prove that it is a lie. It makes you look guilty of everything. Do you understand? I understand. Okay. I will admit. I have an interest in feral art. But I have never committed the act with any animals. Okay, good. So, in the logs, all the talk of things you've done with animals is just talk, correct? Yes. It's all just fantasy. I've talked and role-played about it but I didn't act on it. Now, when you read through those logs, did you notice anything suspicious or different? Did you notice anything that was changed? I have talked to Snake Thing a few times before, but all we talked about was fantasy stuff. He shared on his end an IRL dog video, and it made me uncomfortable, but a little curious. But that's the only thing we've shared. Most of the chat logs are conversations we've never had. Okay, well the more soft side of things were real. I would share what music I was listening to, like All Star, that was me. I talked to him how I was going up to New York to see family. Our conversations were casual, only a few times we ever talked about feral stuff. These are messages that were in the Zeusatist evidence group that were forwarded from your account. They are confirmed from your old account, I've seen the ID checks. The only way that these could be fake is if they hacked your account and used the edit feature to change the messages. 
All I need you to do is tell me if these were things you really said. Took a really big knot. It ripped me and I never healed right. This is partially true, but not exactly what I said. I originally said I took a big dick from a guy and it ripped me, and I haven't healed right since then. Caro. These messages are from July. You can't edit messages that are older than a few days. What you are saying is impossible. Don't be stupid. If I say in the video the logs are edited, it will take someone all of 5 minutes to point out you can't edit old messages. And you'll just be shown as a liar, again. Who are you trying to fool? Fine. It's just they selected random parts of our conversation out of context. I threatened to leave the group chat with him and another person in it because they were not listening to my side of the story and jumping to conclusions. As soon as I said that, they proceeded to blackmail me and said they would make a worse video if I didn't stay. Let's take a look at the whole message for further context. Do you remember when I DM you and asked you if any of this was true? If you ever had these conversations with Snake Thing? You lied to me. You lied to Koth. And even after all of the work we're putting into dispelling the worst parts of these accusations, you want us to lie on your behalf. I'm not asking that. I'm asking you guys to see my side of this. It just feel like it's been ignored. I had to face a choice of telling the truth about the cub art logs, or claim they were faked. It would have been far easier for me to make the claim than for you to claim these are fake, but I fell on my sword and my conscience is clear. I don't have to lie to anyone about it. Nobody that matters to me cares what I draw, and nobody that matters to you would care if you had zoophilic interests, especially if you admit what parts of the evidence are true. That's the only leg you have to stand on to make people believe that you don't want to do the things you said you were interested in doing. If you throw this in Koth's face, I guarantee that video he makes will not be presenting any benefit of the doubt for you. And I wouldn't blame him. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. You of all people should know how I'm feeling right now. I feel like no matter what I say I'm not being heard. If you lie, nobody will believe anything you say. And at that point, it all becomes true. Okay, if you're still making the video, use the new script. I'm sorry. This was not blackmail. They were not making threats to make you stay in the group. They were frustrated that they had put in a lot of work trying to help you and you returned the favor by lying over and over and over again and then throwing a fit when they wouldn't lie for you in public. It's not blackmail to tell someone you won't give them the benefit of the doubt when they have proven themselves unworthy of it. And just to clarify, because I know someone's going to twist this out of context, I'm not trying to defend Kothrix and Zosh as people, especially not Zosh. I'm just debunking false statements made against them. So I agreed to stay in the group. He gave me the revised script, but I didn't really look at it. All right, here is the rough draft for the script. It's very important that you read this and give me your thoughts as soon as possible so we can get this moving. Wow, that's a lot. I agree with the script, but do we outright have to label me as a zoo? Like 95% of the logs would have to be fake for you to be able to realistically claim you weren't a zoo file. Well I guess the best I can do then is to rewrite the script a little to include that you claim some of the logs are faked. But then people are going to want to know which parts, and if you say basically everything bad, it's just going to be a little too convenient for people to believe. That's what I think. But I'll leave that to you. Alright. The words in green are what has changed. Though I recommend reading the entire thing carefully to make sure everything is accurate. And then Caro agreed with me and told me that yes, the logs are his, could we change that to this? And then Caro agreed with me and told me that yes, some of the logs are real. Change he does have an interest in zoophilia to he does have an interest in feral art, and some aspects of zoophilia. And change yes, Caro is interested in animals sexually to yes, Caro is interested in feral artworks of animals. It feels like you're leaving out a lot of what I told you. Feels like you're trying to backpedal and not actually admit to anything now. I agreed to retweet the video when it came out, and I did. But then I saw the video. I unretweeted the video and left the group. You mean you saw the video 12 hours before it was publicly available and approved of it? Video is up. Currently unlisted. I'll be making it public tomorrow morning. I'm showing you this now so you can start thinking about what to say when you see this. I'm not going to change the video at this point. This is it. Watched it. I guess we'll see how it goes. One thing. You used a photo of me and my friend but didn't blur my friend's face. YouTube editor is fucky as shit anyway it's easier to just re-render the whole video and re-upload, honestly. Alright. Yeah, his face and name. 
then it should be good. He claimed that I said the logs were 100% real. Nowhere in that conversation did I say that. L listen, okay, this is important because this is something that people probably don't catch. I say, in the logs, all the talk you've done with animals is just talk, correct? I'm asking him, right, He, because he said he never committed an act with animals. In the logs, he talks about how he fucks his dog and how he's, like, fingered puppies and weird shit like that. So I'm saying, okay, so you're saying that you didn't do that. It's just talk. It's just fantasy, right? And he says, yes. This is him admitting the logs are real, by the way. If I say... Oh, you, you talked about all these things, but they're not real. He's saying, yes, I talked about them. Those logs are real. He made this hit piece on me. Cothrix's video was the furthest thing from a hit piece. It was the most sympathetic video he could possibly make about you without lying. So I honestly do not believe that Kiro is the serial animal rapist that people are claiming him to be. I think he just fantasized about it and shared those fantasies with a close friend of his. I also don't think it's fair to call Kiro a zoo sadist. Though he does mention liking rough sex a few times, Kiro makes it very clear that he doesn't want to hurt animals. He says this over and over again throughout the logs. This is also cemented by the fact that toward the end of the logs, Snake and Kiro have a discussion about how their mutual friend had to specifically be less extreme with his fantasies around Kiro because it made Kiro uncomfortable. Now as far as the Necro stuff goes, Kiro once again makes it very clear that he doesn't want to hurt or kill animals, and he's only interested in animals that were already dead, specifically stating roadkill. Now, that doesn't make it any less gross, but at the very least you could say that you can't really hurt an animal if it's already dead. So, since Kiro doesn't appear in any of the videos or pictures where animals were hurt, and he's very clear about how he doesn't want to hurt animals, I don't think it's fair to call him a zoo sadist, and I don't think that we should lump him in with the rest of the zoo sadist group. Remember, several people were called out as zoo sadists, and we have this big dump of evidence against them. Kiro's name is on that list. But since Kiro is the most high-profile name among them, he alone is being held accountable for everything. People have been accusing Kiro of things that we already know were the crimes of other people in that group. He's been the scapegoat of this whole thing, when in reality he's probably the least extreme person in this group. And remember, we aren't actually talking about a group of friends here, we're just talking about a group of names that someone else compiled. Kiro likely wasn't even in contact with a lot of these people. Kiro is not a zoo sadist, he didn't hurt any animals. He likely didn't even have sex with any animals. He has an interest in bestiality and he shared some images of it. If you're going to judge him for anything, judge him for that. I felt so betrayed by this. If the video was such a betrayal of your trust, why did you tweet this out the morning after? The Cothorix video was accurate on a lot. My interview with Ashley was meant to fill in some of the gaps that were not mentioned in Cothorix's video. Please take a look at both of these videos. The truth is in there. To recap, over the course of about a minute, Kiro lied a grand total of... Because he thought he knew everything based on the accusing tweets, and kept badgering me on changing my story. They proceeded to blackmail me. He gave me the revised script, but I didn't really look at it. I agreed to retweet the video when it came out, and I did. But then I saw the video. He claimed that I said the logs were 100% real. Nowhere in that conversation did I say that. He made this hit piece on me. I felt so betrayed by this. Keep in mind, Kiro has access to these chat logs as well. I know this because he used a screenshot from them in his video. And he would have had to read through most of the logs to find that specific message, considering it's 25 pages in. His incorrect retelling of what happened between him and Cothrix is not the result of a lapse in memory. This isn't him misremembering or forgetting something said in a conversation two years ago. He consciously chose to write these lies into his script, pantomime feelings of sadness and betrayal while saying things he knows are not true, and edit it into a video to gaslight thousands of people. I felt so used by Cothrix. Kiro, if anyone has the right to feel used and betrayed here, it's Cothrix, Zosh, and all your fans who you've been lying to. Cothrix stuck his neck out and took a lot of shit to defend you, yet you feel entitled to sit here and defame him because you're still mad he wouldn't lie for you. Your fans trust you to be honest with them, yet you have so little respect for them that you have no problem lying to their faces and exploiting their emotions for your benefit. And if you're this eager to lie about a fucking YouTube video, why should we believe anything you say about the far more serious issues. You were investigated for two years because the police found the evidence pointing towards your guilt 
was credible enough to dedicate their time to finding out what was going on. The judge who signed off on your search warrant determined the evidence was strong enough that a reasonable person would believe a crime had been committed by you. None of this was about cancel culture. People were not trying to destroy your life over some moral failing like saying a slur seven years ago or cheating on your partner. This was criminal activity being taken seriously by the public and the police. You have not proven your innocence. You have proven that you are a liar. You have proven that you will make your friends lie for you. You have proven that you will backstab anyone who won't lie for you, no matter how much they try to help you. You have proven that you are willing to destroy evidence whenever anyone points it out. And you have proven that you are incapable of loving others in any capacity, because you have done everything you can to erase the memory of your boyfriend and your dog, because they became too inconvenient for you. Goda! Want to say hi to Vine? Nah, no, Goda says hi. <laughs> you may have been able to bury the fire, but you can never hide the smoke that will forever be billowing around you.